All right, what is up guys? Welcome back to the High Jedi channel. In today's video, we will be discussing 20 tips and tricks for Stardew Valley version 1.4 I've compiled. These are more aimed towards beginner and intermediate players, but hopefully at least one or two of these tips might just help you. I'm just going to hop into this, so let's go. Tip number one, farming is life. Make sure to always have some crops going. Farming is going to be the majority of your good profit from the game. Some crops are always going to be better than others, so keep a good mix of if you can. Number two, get silos early. Early game there is plenty of grass to hack away at on your drab looking farm. Silos are fairly cheap and don't take up a lot of space on your farm and more than likely at some point you will be producing animals anyway. So better safe than making your animals go a day without food. Oops. Tip number three, fish away early game. Not only is it good profit, but fishing early game can bank you some hard acquired community center items. The fish tank always seems to be my least favorite to complete, so getting it out of the way early game is amazing. Tip number four, get that greenhouse as soon as possible. The greenhouse is going to be a make or break situation when it comes to profit in early game winter. It's not the only source, but it helps substantially, especially when you fill it with starfruit and then throw those bad boys in a keg. Tip number five, don't pass up the worms. I try to always have a hoe on me, no pun intended. If you say a wormy, dig it up. It can have with it an assortment of items and necessities for the game, including but not limited to clay, books, and artifacts. Tip number six, don't be afraid to buy what you need. Clinton, Robin, and Year One are pretty fair about their wares. Granted, by Year Two, the prices increase on ores, coal, wood, and stone. But nonetheless, if you need a few extra ore to complete some bars, or if you need some extra wood to craft, it doesn't hurt to purchase it. Tip number seven, the desert trader has some good wares. Make sure to have a lot of your gems and items found in Skull Cavern. With the new update, you can now trade a lot of items for bombs, spicy eels, clothes, and other consumables. Keep an extra chest around just for this purpose. It will pay off. Tip number eight, complete the adventure guild quests. I know, I know, monsters are a pain in the butt, especially early game, but with the adventure guild offering rewards for quests completed, it kinda sweetens the pot. Tip number nine, keep a good amount of trees for harvest. Throughout the game, you're going to need a lot of wood for buildings, crafting, aesthetics, and so on. Make sure to have some trees on your farm that you don't need for sap or otherwise, or use them for extra wood. Marnie's farm is great, but sometimes you'll need some extra. Number 10, organize your items. Some people, especially me, have a problem with keeping items I don't need at all or don't need anymore. Sell them or just trash them if the value isn't there. I like to keep chests for ores and materials, plants and furniture, aesthetic materials, farm lights, etc. Tip number 11, make bee houses. They are incredibly great profit producers considering they are pretty much AFK after creating and placing. They produce honey roughly every five days and continue to do so, except in winter. You can also turn them into mead for an increased profit and a nice treat for Pam. Tip number 11 rolls into number 12, artisan skill is money. The artisan skill is my personal favorite when it comes to profit. With the increased sales, utilizing kegs and valuable fruits and vegetables makes it considerably more valuable. Tip number 13, don't forget about your cave. Whether you choose fruit or mushrooms, the cave on your farm is still a good source of community center items, fresh energy or profit. Make sure to check every few days. Tip number 14, upgrade your tools. I'm guilty of this one, but upgraded tools make the quality of life in Stardew Valley that much better. Sometimes it's even essential to success to upgrade your tools as soon as possible. Number 15, got extra ore, smelt and sell. Especially with gold bars and iridium, at 750 gold and 1000 gold respectively, they can fetch quite a good price when sold in bulk. Tip number 16, level seven foraging. Get it? Got it? Good. 
Once you hit level 7 foraging, the tree fertilizer becomes available and makes growing new maples, pines, or oaks so much easier. Just plant a seed, place the fertilizer on top, and wait. Literally a couple seconds. Well, compared to before. <laughs> Tip number 17, when in doubt, wiki it out. Nothing wrong with needing a little help sometimes. Stardew Valley houses thousands of items and recipes for success, and remembering them all can be a pain. So if you find yourself stuck, use Stardew Valley Wikipedia. Tip number 18, upgrade your coops or barns before purchasing animals. It's easier to just maximize your upgrades on a coop or barn before animals. Once you do, the auto feeder is installed and saves a lot of time. Tip number 19. It takes money to make money. Don't be afraid to spend. You'll need to do quite a bit of spending in order to get a lot of profit. It's well worth it though. Once efforts and investments start rolling in, you'll feel like Jeff Bezos in no time. And last but not least, tip number 20, which isn't really a tip, it's just kind of more of a guideline. But there is no set way of playing Stardew Valley. So have fun. Enjoy it. If one way of playing isn't working, try another. There are also a lot of fun mods. Literally countless number of mods that I won't even list because there are so many. From aesthetics to gameplay to quality of life to just overall being like a god in Stardew Valley. So whatever works for you, whatever you're enjoying, just go with it. So alright guys, that is today's video of Stardew Valley version 1.4. 20 tips and tricks that might help you in Stardew Valley. If you did enjoy that, make sure to drop a like, a comment, and subscribe if you're new. Also, catch me five days a week, Thursday through Monday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Twitch.tv. We are currently working on an aesthetic and high profit farm, so you guys are more than welcome to drop by, drop a follow, and uh, ask any questions you may have. So, as always, guys, stay lit, stay up. And stay high, Jedi. Peace.